What do you think happens when we die, Keanu Reeves? I know that the ones who love us will miss us. Born in Beirut, Lebanon, to a British mother and a father of Chinese and Hawaiian descent, Reeves had a rather nomadic childhood that had him move quite frequently. Following his father's abandonment when he was just three, his mother Patricia went on to remarry several times, which caused the family to relocate. They went from Lebanon to Australia, and then to the US before settling down in Toronto, Canada. In the 90s, his father was arrested and jailed for 10 years over possession of cocaine and heroin, making his relationship with his son impossible to repair. Keanu Reeves told Rolling Stone in an interview, quote, The story with me and my dad's pretty heavy. It's full of pain and woe and blank loss and all that blank. Due to the relocations, Reeves attended attended four different schools, one of which he was expelled from. He struggled with dyslexia, which led him to drop out later without a high school diploma. As he told the Daily Mail in 2008, it was difficult. I went to four different high schools in five years. I was okay academically, good at English and creative writing, I was on the chess team, but it was a very small school, and I guess I didn't fit in. I had conflicts and run-ins with the staff. The principal and I didn't see eye to eye. I was one of those why kids. I asked too many questions about everything. I couldn't stop even if it got me into trouble. I wanted my autonomy, and if you wanted to pose something on me, then you and I would have a problem. While his relationship with his father remains contentious, his relationship with his mother was always loving, even if at times a bit tough. Patricia moved from state to state, from marriage to marriage. Once settled in New York, she met and remarried Broadway director Paul Aaron in 1970. It was around this time that Reeves got his first experience in the business. When the couple moved with the kids to Toronto, Reeves' mother became a costume designer and tasked him with fetching materials and cleaning her studio for his weekly allowance. It was less than glamorous and not your typical Hollywood story. The love between Aaron and Patricia didn't last, but Aaron's relationship with Keanu continued, and he often gave him career advice and helped him secure acting jobs early on. Before he would make it as an actor, he'd learn the ins and outs of what goes on behind the camera. At age 15, Paul Aaron hired him as a production assistant on a Chuck Norris film called The Force of One. It may sound glamorous, but Reeves recounts that his main jobs were things like keeping crowds out of the way, fetching drinks, and making sure the snacks were kept appropriately hot or cold. It would be decades before he'd get to superstardom, but he does fondly recall the time he brought Claudette Colbert a Sprite. He said, quote, I was watching the grips, I was watching actors, I was seeing how a film set really works, the call sheets, the general the lights, the lunch times. It was an experience that would serve him well in the decades to come. During this time, Patricia had married Robert Miller, a rock music promoter, before splitting in 1980. Her next marriage to hairdresser Jack Bond lasted until 1994, but by this time, Reeves had become an established name in Hollywood. As an established actor, Keanu Reeves enjoyed the successes of movies like Permanent Record and the smash hit goofball comedy Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, where he starred alongside River Phoenix. The success spawned several sequels, but hoping to explore his range, he went into more mature films like I Love You to Death and My Own Private Idaho, where two hustler friends embarked on a journey of self-discovery. Through the Bill and Ted franchise and My Own Private Idaho, Reeves became close friends with Phoenix, and they were on a similar career trajectory as well. The price of fame hung heavy on both heads, but it took a bigger toll on Phoenix. During his struggle with the pressure of Hollywood, Reeves' best friend turned to drugs. While shooting My Own Private Idaho, Keanu Reeves and River Phoenix went method. Along with holding all-night sessions playing all kinds of music, they, particularly Phoenix, went into the streets to learn from former sex workers, and it was at this time that Phoenix went so deep into the role that he started using heroin. From there, it didn't take long for him to go from casual to a serious drug user. On Halloween night, 1993, Phoenix allegedly drank a deadly mixture of heroin and cocaine in Johnny Depp's club, the Viper Room, before collapsing on the street just outside. He died shortly after at the age of just 23. The news shocked the film industry, but it impacted Reeves the most. Well, I can't talk about my own private Idaho without talking about River. Extraordinary person, extraordinary, original, great heart, great mind, great spirit. He had just begun shooting Speed when the news came, and Sandra Bullock, his co-star in the movie, recalled in an interview, I watched how Keanu grieved, and oh did he grieve for his friend. He's very private, but he couldn't hide that.
The constant blows to Keanu's life continued. While he struggled with the death of his best friend, he was also trying his hardest to stay with his sister Kim, who had been diagnosed with leukemia in 1991. She went into remission a decade later, but during her battle, Reeves stayed by her side, even donating heavily to charities and research organizations dedicated to curing cancer. The incident had a lasting impact on Reeves, and while he has gone above and beyond to help other cancer patients too, he has been incredibly private about it. It wasn't until 2009, 10 years after Kim went into remission, that the public found that Keanu had created his own foundation since he never attached his name to it. Through it all, Keanu continued to work. By the late 90s, Keanu Reeves went from a rising star to a bona fide leading man, starring in some of the biggest Hollywood hits, including Speed and The Matrix. The making of The Matrix presented its own set of problems. At the time, to attract viewers to a movie seemingly made by unknown writers and directors, the studio wanted to get an A-list actor like Leonardo DiCaprio or Tom Cruise. At one point, Will Smith was also in the running, but he refused because he felt he might not be a fully mature enough actor for such a serious role. Eventually, it came down to Johnny Depp and Keanu Reeves, and Reeves showed more interest in the script. After training for five months with his fellow actors doing stunts, martial arts, and practically walking on walls, the Wachowski siblings were never more confident in Reeves' ability to play the one. What perhaps wasn't common knowledge at this time was that Reeves was recovering from a motorcycle accident during his training. This presented a problem. As the crew arrived in Australia to set up for shooting, Reeves was informed that his spine had not yet fused. That meant he couldn't fight or do anything too strenuous, so the shooting schedules were moved around so the simpler scenes were shot first, and the fights after. Around this time, Reeves fell in love with Jennifer Syme. Syme was an aspiring actress and filmmaker who got a small role in David Lynch's film, Lost Highway. She joined the industry at 16 as an intern before going on to become a personal assistant to Dave Navarro. Reeves met Syme at a party, and after a whirlwind romance, Syme got pregnant in 1999 with his child. In December of 1999, eight months into the pregnancy, Syme realized she hadn't felt the baby move in a while. Panicked, the two rushed to the hospital, and their worst fears came true. On December 24th, 1999, Jennifer delivered their stillborn daughter, Ava Syme Reeves. The grief of the loss put a strain on the relationship between Reeves and Syme, and it ended promptly after. But they remained close. Months after laying their daughter to rest, the two were seen enjoying crepes in San Francisco, and it's known that they stayed in touch privately too. It was obvious to the public that while both of them couldn't maintain a relationship given the tragedy, they still cared deeply about each other. A few months into 2001, it looked like things were going well in Reeves' life. With a mega successful career and a friendly relationship with his ex, it seemed things were taking a turn for the better. This, however, was short-lived. In March of 2001, Syme's grandfather passed away, and Syme found herself in the hospital once again. She was discharged not too long after, but another tragedy struck a few weeks later. In April of 2001, Syme attended a party at Marilyn Manson's house, and as she was leaving, she drove her Jeep Grand Cherokee into a row of parked cars in Los Angeles. The impact caused her to eject from her seat, halfway out of the car, and reports claim she died instantly. The funeral was attended by Reeves, Navarro, and David Lynch, among others, and she was buried next to her daughter Ava. Further investigation into the case revealed that Syme had been drinking, and the police found two single-dollar bills rolled up with traces of a white, powdery substance, along with two bottles of prescription drugs, one a muscle relaxant and the other an anticonvulsant. It was later revealed by Reeves himself that he got back together with Syme just before her death. Having a father arrested for possession, a friend died due to to an overdose, and a girlfriend died due to intoxication and drug use was all too much for the still young star. In an interview much later, after the Matrix trilogy ended, Reeves confessed, Grief changes shape, but it never ends. People have a misconception that you can deal with it and say, it's gone and I'm better. They're wrong. When the people you love are gone, you're alone. He went on to say further, I miss being a part of their lives and them being a part of mine. I wonder what the present would be like if they were here, what we might have done together. I miss all the great things that will never be. It's easy to understand why no part of his struggle is common knowledge. Not only is Reeves notoriously private, but he has also worked through the pain, grief, and loss to provide stellar acting performances in movies, giving people no reason to suspect anything could be wrong in his personal life. There was a time, though, when he suffered a dry spell in his career. A quick look through his acting credits, and you'll find that he has been working quite consistently ever since he began acting. What may not be obvious, though, is that a certain movie decision cost him his position with Fox Studios. When approached for Speed 2, Reeves turned them down, explaining to Den of Geek that, quote, I loved working with Jan 
Amanda Bond and Sandra Bullock, of course. It was just a situation in life where I got the script and I read the script and I was like, ugh. It was about a cruise ship. And I was thinking, a bus, a cruise ship, speed, bus. But then a cruise ship is even slower than a bus and I was like, I love you guys, but I just can't do it. The jury is out whether it was a good or bad decision. However, he was blackballed by Fox for over 10 years after turning it down, which effectively put him in movie jail. The spell continued when he gave what critics called a less than stellar performance in the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still. It turned out to be a lesson though. As time went on, he didn't seem the most content in his career. Despite working all the time, he hadn't starred in a studio production since 2013, after 47 Ronin. While struggling with his career, Reeves was also on the receiving end of some odd lawsuits. In 2008, a photographer named Allison Silva claimed he had been trying to get photos of Reeves when the actor hit him with his car and broke his wrist. Reeves had a different story. Apparently, he was visiting a relative in a hospital. Silva followed him and then tripped over himself and fell. Thanks to an emergency room doctor, who confirmed it was an old injury and a video of Silva climbing a fence to get a photo of Britney Spears, the Los Angeles Times reported that it took just an hour for the jury to clear Reeves. Two years later, Reeves was sued by Karen Sala. Sala claimed that Kiana was the father of her four adult children and that she was entitled to $3 million a month for her expenses and another $150,000 a month in child support. In spite of Reeves saying he had never met the woman and a DNA test proving he wasn't the father, the case ended up going to court. Sala claimed the DNA results had been tampered with and that Reeves, at one point, had disguised himself as her ex-husband. Fortunately, the case was dismissed, but the pointless lawsuits kept coming. Once, when Reeves lent his voice to a Toy Story 4 character, Duke Kaboom, the Evil Knievel estate claimed the character was created to make viewers think they were associated with the film. This case was thrown out too, but it was undoubtedly draining for the star as he continued to contend with the problems in his personal life. Through it all though, Keanu has persevered, but the internet and critics are rarely kind when they see a chink in your armor. When the world first met Reeves, it was in his role as Ted in Bill and Ted, and the world hasn't let him forget about it. On a scale of 1 to 100, how many words do you know? These are jokes, but it didn't help with Reeves' already failing image. His early interactions with the press were clearly uncomfortable, and his image as Ted has had a lasting impact. He told Rolling Stone in an interview, That's frustrating. That's very frustrating. I get no respect. His career, despite the media misconstruing his level of intelligence, has held up, and the few failures he has suffered haven't impacted his image and reputation as an artist. He is the most liked actor in Hollywood, with his female co-stars having nothing but praise for him. It seems Keanu has no problem poking fun at himself too, almost playing a parody of himself in the movie Always Be My Maybe. He is also well aware that the internet makes memes of him. We're all familiar with uh, sad. I'm just eating a sandwich, Sad Keanu. Man. It's a sad Keanu meme right there. Man, I'm this is a frame sandwich. of Berserker from... Yeah. His relationships, if there were any, remained a closely guarded secret until 2019, a decade after he actually met his current girlfriend. Keanu met Alexander Grant in 2009, and back then, they bonded over some of his self-confessed, self-pity poetry. She drew illustrations to go with his words, and it later became the book he published called Ode to Happiness, which came out in 2011. The book was so successful that they collaborated again for Shadows, which came out in 2016. Before they went public with their relationship, they were spotted together at events, including the St. Laurent Men's Spring Summer Show in Malibu. Walking on the red carpet, hand in hand with her, was definitely a change for Keanu, who had kept his life incredibly private until then. Aside from book collaborations, they launched a publishing company, X Artist Books, which was aimed at giving a platform to what he called unusual collaborations. Though the couple has faced a considerable amount of ageism from the media, it seems they've pulled through. They now live happily together, a happiness that Keanu possibly struggled to imagine for himself 20 years ago. In an interview with Esquire, he once confessed he didn't see himself ever having a family after his tragic past, saying, I'm too, it's too late, it's over. But with Alexander Grant, it seems the prospect of having his happily ever after is far from over. Adversity makes heroes of some and villains of others. Keanu has undoubtedly led a difficult personal life hidden behind the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. And through it all, he has persevered with incredible mental strength. There are very few like him who remain grounded, despite having such a status among the Hollywood elite. Because you're such a famous actor, how do you do to manage the ego? Oh, um, you know, for me, I, I just, uh... I know I'm a pretty simple guy, you know, um, you know, I, ever since I was a young kid, I, I wanted to act, you know, I started professional acting when I was 15, um, and, you know, I've been really lucky to have the chance to have a career, and um, I don't know, I just have always tried to keep it simple. 
His image as the nicest man in Hollywood makes much more sense when you consider his history. And if anything, that image is refined in the context of his hardship and tenacity. Enjoyed this video? Then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Be Inspired channel for more motivational content. Thanks for watching.